Hello, and welcome, welcome, welcome to a new bit of content on the channel. Oh my god, the memes, don't let your memes be dreams. We are playing Victoria 3, it's finally launched, and we're going to be looking to play a run as Japan. Now, my understanding is in Victoria 2, there was a lot of railroading events that allowed you to industrialize Japan, kind of earlier than historical but also uh on pace with historical with different bonuses and stuff in victoria 3 it's all mechanical systems and whatnot and i think how i'm going to play this run is this game is way too complicated there are tons of people that have done tutorials on how to play uh that are better than me at explaining things and all the other things i'm going to bring you through a story of this campaign by snapping to the points of interest and decision points as we go through playing this game. Basically, my goal here is to move Japan from one of the worst positions in the world, being such a country in 1836 that's stuck in its backwards ways of feudalism, you know, and an empire shogunate running the country, towards an industrial superpower like... Great Britain, who through their colonies has, like, whatever, a quarter of the world's population, mostly through India, under its, you know, heel, as it were, that is absolutely dominating the world in terms of gross domestic product, developing new technologies, what have you. Obviously, there's going to be some colonialism and stuff happening here, even with America with its manifest destiny. But basically, we need to bring Japan into the fold and we want to modernize so that we can do our own objectives. Maybe that's a little bit of, you know, colonializing like different areas around us to give us more um, resources, production, manpower, wealth. But generally, this type of game, Victoria 3, is about what happens within the borders of your country, right? Looking at the different populations that you have, uh, the makeup of your country. Perhaps I can look in here. I can see the cultures, my population, you know, my my struggling, struggling poor strata, or my middle class that's a little bit more secure, and my upper that's more secure, right? But that's because right now, almost everyone that lives in my country is a peasant laborer or otherwise, and they are absolutely broke. They they represent, you know, 84% of my, my population is peasants, which is people that are very much subsistence farmers living off the land uh, that they're cultivating and making their small products themselves. And we need to elevate these people out of, out of poverty, basically. Here we can go into the population of a particular area. We can see our peasants. They are struggling, as mentioned. And I think that there's a way, I think that I've seen this and it was very helpful, um, to look at their net income. And you can see that a peasant makes 60 pence per year, 59 pence in annual income. It's, it's the value here at the bottom. Um, whereas something like, what else do we have in this uh, location? No, it's more peasants. Uh, different makeup of, like, this is Shinto, and that's Mahaya. Let's say a laborer, right? How much higher up the social strata are you there? Impoverished, so better than struggling. Uh, and if we look at their, their wealth, they're making 5.6. That's actually really good. I wonder where they're working. And basically, all these socioeconomic factors are really doing a lot in our country. The biggest thing that we want to do is change our politics, pass different laws, and industrialize our country. Unfortunately, the shogunate, the ruling power, the polit politics, as it were, are going to fight us at every turn. Hopefully, we can cozy up to these factions in the short term, and then maybe try and, you know, bring some of these marginalized groups, like the industrialists, the trade unions, who knows, even the petit bourgeoisie, into the fold, and try and take the samurai and the shogunate out so that we can industrialize this country. And what I would love to do is a little side goal, apart from industrializing and spreading out big, is I'd like to make a communist Japan. I think that would be fun, at least socialist in a lot of ways. Communist is preferable. So we'll see that what we can do with this run. Like I said, I'm going to kind of cut away and cut back in 
um, as I go through the campaign, kind of giving you the highlights of what's happening. Obviously, any wars or major economic developments are going to be big. But one of the things that we have really working against us is that we are a closed economy, basically isolated from the world and its technologies. And we're going to have to really build up our industry one thing at a time. We can't rely on the British market or the French or the Russians to build us simple tools. Like, we're going to have to build the tools. For that, we're going to have to mine the iron. For that, we're going to have to get the, the, the tools to dig the iron. That Oh my god, we're going to have to fund it all. It's going to be insane, and I'm super excited to jump in. We'll see how this turns out, and uh, I'll stop in soon. Okay, before we jump into it, let's talk about our current state economically if we go to the rural buildings you can see that the most of our economy is like plantations and farms you know 10 15 12 of whatever ones and then down at the bottom 1756 subsistence farms we are manpower rich in japan but most of it is super unproductive people just making enough food to feed themselves making enough furniture to house themselves we want to up productivity of people nationwide we do have a small manufacturing sector in here paper mill glassworks and stuff and we can look that mostly it's catering to uh the nobility basically in luxury furniture luxury cer ceramics and stuff hand assembly of things and the problem is like certain technologies for instance this one here we can see using water tube boilers at the paper mills rather than hand assembly uh first of all can i please i think you have to hold it there for a second and then i can come over perfect you can see that it's going to cost us a tremendous amount of money so we lose all our profitability but also it would reduce the amount of workforce right we'd be using technology to reduce the workforce we don't care about that right we that's not what we need what we need is things that in increase overall output i don't care if i have to throw a million people at the problem we can also change all kinds of things so there's amenities production methods like what do shipyards build wooden ships reinforced ships uh you can see here market stalls need more sir or produce more services but has less glass it also employs more clerks rather than laborers right that's some good changes the problem is that certain jobs require qualifications right we need higher educated people to work the jobs and and do what we want and i think that that was maybe an example in perhaps some of our logging camps definitely with those clerk jobs that we were seeing earlier uh we don't have a way of increasing clerks uh in our country right now without education so really our our main thing right now that we want to do is to industrialize certain sectors. I think the first thing that we'll do is maybe logging. Um, it seems like an easy one to do where we can go into the sawmill business and that will require machinists and laborers and also tools, which means that we'll actually have to create a tool industry, which means that we'll create an iron industry. So we're gonna build that all up. And then also we need to get people that can actually work in those jobs, in all those sectors, these machinists, uh, meaning that we'll also have to educate those people. And for that reason, in our technology screen, sorry, wrong section, our first thing that we're gonna try and research is not extra, actually production methods. It's not anything military related. It's actually society related. We're looking to research academia so that we can start maybe building up some universities and teaching you know, some of these jobs, machining for instance, uh, to our population, which we're going to need. So we're going to need the resources, the technology, and the workforce all to make this happen. So I'll snipe back in once I have some things set up. But basically, the next thing that we're going to be doing is building our first set of buildings. Um, we also need to increase our construction capacity. So one of the things that we'll do, and I think that anybody that you watch will, will mention this, is that we can use some of our authority as a ruling dictatorial government to pass, sorry, this is a, pass a decree of road maintenance, which is gonna increase state infrastructure, building and efficiencies. And if we do that in our capital, we're now gonna build faster. And not only that, we wanna build very fast 
So let's go ahead and build a construction building, a construction sector. And that will allow us to spend more money more quickly with more building supplies to eventually build things in here. So I think that you should see this in here. So now we have a nine out of nine building capacity being used. And that's because we have some construction sectors in Chubi and Kanzai. And now we're actually upgrading one of those to go up a little bit more. And what we'll actually be looking to do is perhaps even change from wooden frame buildings, which gives us a plus four construction right now, up to iron frames, up to 10 construction. But again, again, this is all very difficult because we can't just buy these products overseas. We need to build up the economy one step at the time. You can see this is our market right now. And let's just look at the market prices. Right now, opium is very hard to get in our country, but people want it. It's very, very expensive. 75% over the asking price. Clothes in our market are very expensive. So anybody who's looking to buy these goods needs to pay a premium to get them. Furniture, lumber is actually plus nine. So by first starting with that industry and building that up, we can bring down the price of lumber and make other f businesses like furniture more profitable right so we're just trying to go from and we need hardwood apparently and this is all from the sell and buy orders which is going to slowly move the needle on where that market price is i think a standard price is like the the column with a couple of tokens and if we come to the bottom you can see that oil we have oil in the market but not many people need oil for anything and maybe we can it's just pop consumption. Same thing here. Is this rice? Sugar, tea, dye. So things that use sugar right now would be really good to expand an industry. The thing that's worrisome is that we're only producing 63 sugar, right? So we need to, we, we, we could create a very profitable business to start buying and using the sugar in our processes. But, 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 there isn't a huge pool to pull from where for instance wheat in our market or grain we've got lots and lots and lots of grain which is going to make it very cheap actually for poor populations to feed themselves which is actually a net good it'll up the quality of life of the people that need grain to live but it will also make it so that farmers and grain farmers are broke because their product is worthless. So we need to balance out our economy a little bit, which is gonna be difficult. These, those were, uh, you can do staple good, goods, which is the foods, we can do the industrial goods, we can do the luxuries, and then finally there's military goods once we get into guns, cannons, whatnot. Right now we're doing swords because feudal Japan, am I right? So let's, uh, I'll, I'll stop in here in a minute. Quick interlude here, just looking at the laws that we wanna pass in our country. And again, at first we want to appease the samurai and the shogunate to make them want to give us better investment into the types of projects we want to do. Both of those groups would be made very happy if we were to start passing a law for professional armies. So if we do this, the shogunate will get plus 10 and become very happy with us. And the samurai will get plus 12. 20. They love this. And it has a high chance of passing, which will give us, you know, if it does pass, a, a, a little happiness over time. So this has a, a chance to pass. It's based on some bureaucracy levels and other things we'll talk about in a second. But basically, while that's active, if I go to the next week here, you can see the days kind of ticking by here. You'll see that these two interest groups, if I go to the overview... Uh, we're getting their family ties, which means that the shogunate, because they are uh, in power and happy, they exert extra influence or provide us with extra influence, which is our kind of political um, resource. But then now we actually have noblesse oblige, which is 20% of aristocrats are going to contribute to the investment pool. So this is the amount of money that we have on hand for building and constructing new things in our government. So because um, the shogunate loves us so much, and because they have so much clout within our government, 48%, my God, 
They are now pushing the aristocrats in our country to help fund the government projects. Little do they know that I'm using those funds to build structures and economies to eventually undermine their power. But that's fine. And they're helping us so much because we're passing laws that they like. Same thing, uh, the samurai, th this is less important to us, but they give us a discount on the military uh, technology costs because they'll help us with uh, developing those technologies. And then also they fight and defend stronger because they are so approving of our country. Uh, though, if ever they were to hate us and become unhappy, they would uh, create material waste and then there'd be a higher cost burden on our country for those things. Similarly, if we make the shogunate hate us, they'll pull away agricultural ranching and plantation tax income. So more reasons to move away from those types of productions uh as we industrialize our society all right so we're still industrializing the country still building up our production capacity it's slow right now there's a lot of things to talk about but i just want to give an example of one of the changes we want to make right now we have urban ch centers right i talked about earlier market stalls uh and a couple other things that we can change here but one of the things is the churches and right now we haven't passed a state-run church and i don't intend to because I'd like to make a change here to free churches. And you can see here, this is gonna reduce the amount of clergy, but increase the amount of clerks. So clergy um, are part of these common interest groups, right? Predominantly in the Buddhist monks, though some are in the peasantry, but the clerks will be in the petite bourgeoisie and intelligentsia, which are groups that are more motivated to change the country into an industrialized way so by changing the types of churches that we have in our country uh to free churches now we're going to be increasing the proportion of people that are employed and work in sectors uh that have interests that are aligned to what i'm trying to do with the country similarly we want to do that with our our administration so right now the government is mostly being worked on by, um, as you can see, bureaucrats and clergymen. But if I go here to secular administration, this is actually showing the change. It's going to be more expensive because of other reasons, but we would be removing the clergy and once again empowering bureaucrats. And bureaucrats, again, intelligentsia and bourgeoisie. So we want to empower the strata of our population by giving them work in our society and valuing their labor while undermining others. So like the Buddhist monks in this particular sense, I want to eventually replace, you know, uh, aristocrats with the, you know, union leaders and even capitalists, what have you. But for now I have to pull away at the lower layers of our society and move different groups around so that's just we're not ready to go to that administration and you'll see all of that uh highlighted text here not enough qualifications right look at all the bureaucrats that would be needed for this we don't have a way of doing that which again is why we're we're doing the technology to try and help teach our people how to become better bureaucrats rather than letting the clergy run the country so i hope that that's clear moving on i'll see you soon and there we have it. We are now building our first tooling workshop. It's going to take 37 weeks. And yeah, that's going to help us do a whole bunch of things. Like we talked about, it's gonna give us mechanical tooling to help us with different production methods. In particular, we talked about logging camps, going to sawmills, slow transition. But again, we can use tools in so many capacities. For instance, if we can invent lathes, die workshops in the future even here going to like changing our tooling workshop to use some of its own product with pig iron but again that will require iron which is not something that we're producing yet so lots of little steps here that have to be made incrementally as we dial in this economy and as i look around the country looking for more and more opportunities I'm seeing that Japan has some whaling industries, which I think is where that oil is coming from, right? Oil and meat. It also has a lot of fishing uh, opportunities for fish and stuff. That's cool. 
Uh, but what's really interesting is that that's using clippers, right? Wooden, larger ships. Right now, simple fishing doesn't require ships, but as we go up to fishing trawlers, that's what we need. So another industry that we might be looking to do is going to our shipyards and actually right now it's it's doing civilian shipbuilding but we might end up going and and trying to upgrade or increase the amount of uh of clippers that we can build and as you can see that requires more hardwood and engines and things like that and even in our economy right you can see that going to this production method clipper convoys are actually not worth that much right now but um that's mostly like the reason this is such a bad industry is because engines and hardwood are so expensive in our country and you can see that the demand for engines right the cost would go from 60 to 105 and hardwood's already maxed out i think at 70 so it's like insane goods prices because right now we're not producing those goods in our country so we have to build up to that level okay so our tool workshop is up and running and remember we don't need the iron right away i'm gonna work on it anyway but until we can go to uh the new pig iron tools for now we can make crude tools using wood as an input that's fine this was not hiring people at first so you can see how it was not earning any money until i went to one of our logging camps and said you uh not this use sawmills meaning that now there's a demand for tools so now what we're doing is looking at our market you can see we're only selling five tools and 12 want to be bought from that lumber mill meaning that the price of freaking tools is astronomical you got the gold 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 so every week this uh factory is hiring on more people to produce more tools to get the sell orders more in line with the buy orders, which just happened. So now let's go over and go to that second uh, logging. Actually, this one was already a level two logging camp. What we'll do is coming into our next province over that has logging as a uh, as a thing. And again, we're gonna move them to sawmills as well. I don't think they need to do hardwood. I think that would be a loss of money. We need some hardwood in our country. Um, but now we can go back to the market and let another week tick in. And you're gonna see, look at that. Holy geez. The buy orders, again, are massive. So what we need to do is see that the employment keeps increasing here. We could expand the capacity, but again, it's the employment that's important. Uh, lots of vacancies at the moment. And then what we want to do is look to move the production uh, type to another stage. And mostly what we need for that is iron. So what we're doing right now, you can see this icon here. In seven weeks, we should have an iron um, thing all done up for us, right? We should have iron done. We're also using some of our uh, influence abroad now, trying to improve our relationship with uh, Russia, for instance. And perhaps we can even work to... Uh, create some trade routes and stuff in the future. Right now we're an isolationist economy, so I'm not sure how much it's gonna help, but that's kind of what we're working on. So right now, we've created a tools market in Japan. Again, we can't buy abroad, we have to do it ourselves. And we're slowly bringing in industries to support that tooling for the broader transition. Let's go. It's repetitive at this point. I know I've said it over and over and over again, but I'm just bringing you through along these baby steps. So in the future, we can just slam down factories and nobody's worried. And one more thing I'd like to talk about is here is the productivity of this building. And you can see for the longest time, it was stagnating. Then we introduced the change, which actually kind of had a weird rippling spike effect as we brought the tools into the market. And then as tool production ramped up, so too is the productivity of this location. And right now tools are kind of, see, it's been crazy based on whether or not this economy has been turned on or not, but they're stabilizing. And now we're gonna be able to keep dialing it in. So I just wanted you to show or to see uh, that kind of productivity thing here as demand has fluctuated. Uh, it's a little hard to see there perhaps, but here you can see the tools going that up and down. I guess that's the same graphic. Um, but if we look at stable goods of wood, it's actually 
lowering the cost uh, because now wood is is just that much more available on the market. Right, we're making more of it, and we should also be making more hardwood, which again has come significantly down which is gonna increase the profitability of businesses that use those outputs. So this is being used in furniture manufacturing, shipyards and war machines is the hardwood. And then normal wood is just being used in a whole bunch of different things. So all these other things are gonna become more profitable as this comes up. As those profitable businesses come on, there's gonna be more of a demand on the lumber industry. And while we're doing this, we're building up our economies of production of tools to allow for more of that. So we're going to keep pushing lumber yards. We're going one at a time here instead of nationwide to switch to this production. Uh, softwood production is fine. Again, we could lower the total amount of other woods to go into hardwood, but that's not required. And that should keep putting pressure on this building to bring people on and it has and now we're at a very productive state because there's a high demand for the tools and we're going to be looking to use our infrastructure to build this up even further we also now have this mine as you can see it's no product productivity nobody wants to buy iron right now because iron is only used in industry so let's go back to our tools and pig iron tools let's go privately owned not subsidized because i probably can't do that yet and now this should increase the amount of tools that we can put out again we're gonna have a, a labor weird thing here oh look capitalists are coming in and machinists so now we're getting a higher we're we're producing jobs for a different strata of people meanwhile this is coming into play it's using picks and shovels manual drilling hand crank crane road carts and merchants guilds but eventually ownership models can change this creates shopkeepers other times will produce uh bureaucrats and capitalists what have you so exciting times ahead as we industrialize this country uh let me briefly just check in on tools again you can see it's come back down so i think we're ready now if i go to all of my buildings in the world's areas let's dial in the sawmills oh i'm a little bit afraid of what that's gonna do but we're ready for it and then next up we'll be looking to build industries that use that so specifically we have textile mills and stuff already we really want to get a furniture manufacturer working again it shows that this is not going to be profitable but as the wood prices come down and everything else comes up, we'll see the change. Okay, so we got academia, finally. Now it's time to start going on some universities and stuff. And I looked around, like mass communication, colonialization, both important technologies for us. You'll see that the top part of Japan, like these are actually decentralized powers that we could like, colonize the rest of complete all of japan go up through our islands and whatnot very important for us to do and i think that they can be quite economically prosperous locations but i've actually decided to instead go for empiricism because that allows us to invest into the institution of education opening up things like public schools uh constitutional reforms dialect lots of lots of things so total separation of church and state for instance that might be interesting so we're going to try and educate our people because right now we're doing a lot of things we actually hit a clipper shortage at one point as i transitioned our fishing over into those economies but right now we're, we're still have a lot of buy orders so now we're looking to build out our fishing our shipbuilding industry but what i really wanted to get to was we need to build where is it gonna be urban can we build a university 10 percent more qualifications more innovation for research clerks academics laborers it's gonna require paper which i'm pretty sure we do have in our economy right now so let's go ahead and let's build a university it might cost us quite a bit you can see we're actually running a deficit right now not as bad as we were moments ago and it'll go down as we're constructing i think this number goes red if you're 
net income is so bad um, that even if you weren't building new buildings, you'd be in the red. But you can see we have a tremendous amount of gold reserves, so many millions of dollars. So it's depleting these gold reserves that have been built up for development over time. So we're totally fine going into the negative, negative, negative to build out our economy and kind of kickstart everything here. Uh, one thing though, is we can issue a local decree that might help called promote social mobility. And we're just using our authority over the country to push certain things as well as bolster the intelligentsia because they are in line with some of our like anti-slavery things that we need to push. Because right now we have like a surf society. It's not that great. Overall quality of life, standard of living hasn't changed too much over time. But you can see our GDP um, is actually quite big overall, isn't it? Jeez, look at that. I'm not, I'm little weekly GDP used to be down at 325 and now it's up higher. It's hard to tell right away because it's giving me the millions of annual GDP here. Uh, but our population hasn't changed too much. We have more radicals than we did before, but we also have more loyalists through those uh, that policy or law that we enacted earlier. So overall, pretty good stuff. But the big thing is that our GDP is growing steadily and the seeds have been set. Uh, looking at our market thing, we're, we're just producing more than we were before. Again, let's look at the overall market prices. You can still see that luxury is quite high in price, in particular clothing uh, and furniture. Though now that our wood is so cheap, it's probably down here somewhere. Uh, excuse me. Oh, lumber, it's still plus 25. Jeez. I think it's mostly because of our construction projects. We're a huge consumer ourselves of lumber. So we like when that, uh, you know is is lower for sure you can see that we're actually have a shortage of wood it could go worse um geez we should build out more lumber yards but i was actually in the middle of producing something else uh as you can see here a furniture manufactory and a university so the furniture i was hoping would help with that whole furniture shortage that we have in our country though we should look into perhaps building up more uh logging more logging camps. Right now they're doing good, they're using tools, they're creating jobs for machinists and capitalists, very awesome. Let's keep doing that and then we'll be right back. So some time has gone by, we're now into 1839 and progress is, is coming along smoothly. The biggest bottleneck for us is we need to up our usage of iron, basically. We have tools that need the iron, so we can't completely shock this, but we also have uh, construction sectors that we're trying to move into iron frame building, which will use more iron, but it'll also use more tools. And it will give us way more return on investment from our construction sector. The thing that's tricky is that our construction sector in our capital state is so big, it's eight out of 15, that if we switch to iron frame, we actually crash or create major shortages in the iron market so we can't build any more tools because there's not enough iron left to make the tools that we need to make the iron. So right now we are digging deep and we are digging greedily in this iron mine. We're putting a lot of our political backing around creating more development for that and we're slowly trying to dial this in while upping the fishing industry with more wharves uh, and also building out that kind of well the furniture thing is fine it's got good employment this one here we actually focused it on non-luxury instead of luxury just to help improve uh the standard of living and some other things that are happening there uh, we can't all in on one type of good for instance here like there's only buy orders for 53 so when i shift all of my buy or production to luxury goods yes it lowers the price but there's too much competition in the sector whereas if without that person producing we still have shortages in the normal furniture market so i'm just kind of pushing the most out of both markets at the same time even if you get higher returns in the uh luxury market there still is a limited ceiling of 53 buy orders coming from our aristocrats and others whereas in the smaller market 
you know, there's tons of farmers that want to buy and use furniture that just can't have access to it right now. So those are the major developments right now. We're digging greedily down here. We're enhancing our forestry sector up here and we're increasing ship production down in the south. So a lot of things are moving along. Um, the influence of different parties is kind of moving up and down. You can see here a little bit. The Buddhist monks made a huge comeback for a while because they had a very popular leader jump in. But it's been trending back down. And we're also trying to get the uh, clout of uh, the intelligentsia up. Even though they hate us right now because we're underfunding a lot of things and they hate a lot of the policies that are opposed we want them to push for change in our society so we're trying to make them a stronger force the petite bourgeoisie is also helping us with some loan and financing and bureaucracy so lots of good things overall we have tremendous bureaucracy available to us but we don't want to invest in the police force anymore that just it allows the landowners like the shogunate to stay in power more and more not something that we're looking to do instead we're waiting on our technology to finish so that we can get education and then we'll use our bureaucracy uh, for that. So lots of production happening right now. But overall, the biggest piece is if we look at those tools. Again, these tools are like so important to us. Can we not see show consumption? So this is, uh, oh, that's on the map. So you can see in the map where it is. But the price fluctuation over time is going up, which is increasing demand. So we want to produce more. I wanted to actually see the sell orders over to my, over time, but I uh, I can't quite do that yet. But anyways, lots of uses for the tools, and we need the technology to really put them to use. So coming soon. And finally, 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 we found ourselves in a position where the intelligentsia and some other parties have enough support that they overrun the opposition support uh, against landed voting. Right now we have an autocracy. There's just a head of state. Uh, there's only two supported interest groups in the government. Here, we could imp put in landed voting. So again, the same people retaining a certain amount of power. We'd really like to go to, you know, wealth voting, census suffrage, universal suffrage, what have you. But to get there, a stepping stone might be landed voting where we kind of... Right now in autocracy, the aristocrats have more political strength in the system. There's a 50% bonus. In landed voting, they still have that 50%, but then there's also a 50% bonus to capitalist clergy officers. And what we want to do is use the capitalist vote to pull us away from uh, this autocracy even further and perhaps push us into wealth voting or something like that. So. All of these things are good. Let's click to enact this. It's going to be a slow, hard fought battle because of how low um, the how low the support is. And you can even see here, 17% chance to win outright every 200 days, it's very slow. 26% chance to advance it, so about 40%. But there's almost a 50% chance that this is going to get debated and brought back and made less likely to succeed. And it's basically just being pushed by several factors here, but then held against by others. So hopefully we can keep pushing the intelligentsia into a, a place of power with more and more clout. We have been bolstering them over time. Uh, but... Just because you're bolstering a group over time doesn't mean that they can fight against all the natural factors pushing against it. But right now you can see the current leader is pushing against it. We are bolstering this party and their clout is coming up. So we're going to try and support that as much as possible to make land reform, legal reform, political reform all possible in the Japanese shogunate. Let's freaking go. Okay, okay, and we just passed empiricism, so now we can start pushing for public schools and other things. Again, to enact these laws, we're going to need support at a government level, which is pretty difficult right now. But at least we now have that, and we're going to be keeping our eye open for whenever we can find support. We could also look for other ways of increasing our social kind of capacity here you can see we're very very slowly 
getting um, currency standards, which is quite nice. Per capita taxation law might be very nice for us. Uh, we could also start working the colonialization. I'm not sure yet which one we love. The cotton gin is coming in. That one's almost going to get completed for us for free from technology spread. All of these production capacities here are years and years to create for us because our, our research is so low. So I think the, the goal here is going to be maybe to just help finish this here quickly because we're getting a natural spread from the world right now. Uh, it's going to finish in no time. And then we might move to colonialization and move along. And then we'll be looking once the, the voting reform goes through to perhaps push uh, taxation reform or education reform. All of that to push the country one step at a time. Okay, quick reversal here. Call on, we just got currency standards. Lovely, loving it. Again, we have to wait for laws to be ready to be passed. Right now we're passing other things. The lathe after cotton gin, we're already getting support from the international just technology spread that's kind of happening in here. And if we put our weight behind it, we can get the lathes in 11 to 17 months, which will then open up three new industries for us. Lathes, uh, sorry, these are dye workshops, which are quite nice. Goods production, making more clothes. Let's freaking go. Lathes is for furniture and then leaded glass. So I think these are all production methods. Um, though for textile mills, for furnitures and for glass works. So lots of good stuff. That's going to be able to change how we do what we do. And if we go into here, for instance, like that's we're talking about this technology right here. So instead of handcrafted furniture using just fabric and wood, we'll now use tools, which will support our tools economy, but then blast out the amount of furniture being produced. Right. And that is not just for the furniture. It's for the textiles so that we're going to have more clothing. And those for us right now, if I go to our market, um, these are produced goods with high market prices, staple goods with high market prices, clothing, very high, services, very high, and so is furniture. Uh, services, great question, what is services? Services is what you get out of your urban center. So right now we have market stalls, and I've been waiting for until now to start upping our demand on glass to go to market square. So now we're good to go. We're gonna up the production. And also we upped the number of shopkeepers and other things. We could go to gas street lights. The problem is we don't have coal in our country. So we don't have any way of keeping that going. So it's unlit streets for now uh, with free churches. Let's freaking go. So that should up the amount of services in the economy um let's have a quick peek here at market services again it was at plus 13 before with a small deficit and then as a week ticks over we'll see what that does went down to plus 12 and it might continue to adjust uh see look at this big dip it's been stagnant for so long as other pieces come into play here and again here we can sew potential on map i don't know what potential is yet Maybe if I hover over potentials. Uh, I'm not sure yet. But there's production. Where is Where are services being produced? Primarily in, in urban cores throughout the world. And also consumption. Where are they needed? In those same places. So services industry. It's, it's interesting. But we don't have to go very deep into it right now. All you need to know is our economy is growing, baby. We did add some dips. Uh as we are shifting gears in our economy, trying to make all the levers work. But overall, we're in the middle of addressing this massive, massive shortage in iron by drill, dravy, drill. Just up, up this production all day. And what we've been doing is going to our buildings tab and just making sure that it is the highest priority building in our queue. So see you soon. I hope you've been enjoying so far. I've been having a ton of fun. I know this is just economics explained, but is good and it passed hell yeah political strength for all my parties let's go landed voting 
and also apparently unlocks women's suffrage let's freaking go interest groups endorsed it though the samurai did not like it the samurai are now uh not pleased with us but also not against us we, we aren't using any of their bonuses anyway so i'm not too worried about that but what we can do now is look at our politics again and look at the government and say hey is there any new laws that we're looking to pass oh we go back to autocracy yo let's let's go but no not really they, they support a couple of different things colonial affairs is one of them uh we so if we do want to go for uh colonialization this government would pass laws for that Ooh, graduated taxation very cool uh, but what we need next is to get out of the, the 13 laws that the government currently approves and into the next 54 that they do not. So, again, that's all about empowering our different groups, the intelligentsia in particular, though they just lost a little bit of clout based on some different movements. But again, we're trying to grassroots this by building it up from the bottom up and particularly building up their presence in the capital region because my understanding is the population in this region has a bonus in some way towards the political um though a lot of pops here are politically inactive versus those that are maybe we can scroll all the way down clerks yo profession bourgeoisie intelligentsia so a lot of them are in the petite bourgeoisie even Maybe we can help them get into power in some way. Though I'm sure the academics are predominantly part of the intelligentsia. So we're, we're building up all of these groups. Small, 12,000 here, 1,000 here, what have you. Capitalist, very industrialist even. But they are very marginalized at this point. But we're going to push and we're going to push hard. Uh, and you can see here, this is the politically inactive versus part of a uh, group or not. So, awesome. So very cool. We just had our first elections and basically there's now two parties, Constitutional Reform Party and Imperial Rule Party made up of the samurai and the shogunate, but also the intelligentsia and the peasants that are working together, which I think is very interesting that these are the parties that are working together. And if we can get peasants more educated and motivated, hopefully they can join in to uh, empower the intelligentsia in putting in the constitution reform party. Like this is super, super interesting for me. Again, right now there's little that we can do. Uh, we could push in, you know, a national guard or a dedicated police force. I'm actually surprised the dedicated police force would go through, but you can see the peasants intelligentsia and all those other parties do uh like it right now it's a local police force i don't really want to fund the police right now it, it helps the current institution stay in power um freedom of conscience is is good and all of these other things we're just not ready for outlawed dissent oh my god right now it's censorship outlawed dissent is actually an improvement on censorship no it's actually worse it's, it's like outlawing oh god so lots of interesting stuff there. I just thought that the fact that we have our first political parties is uh, is pretty cool. You next not from any radicals. Yeah, so we can uh, reform the government right now and put in some parties and bring in others. Let's just take them out and put them in. The problem is that the legitimacy of the government would come down, and government legitimacy, as I understand is kind of important is is kind of important so if we were to i mean maybe we can just do this i don't know i'm on iron man mode so i'm a, i'm afraid to uh to do that maybe i'll look more into exactly how legitimacy will uh will work for us legitimacy oh my god there are ways of using the tooltips but i'll get back to you once i figure it out so apparently it's a delay in the ability to enact laws and some other things. The fact that we won't get radicals from doing the change right now means that I'm willing to give this a shot. And now, oh my god, we could push for insane laws, but it would take forever and they would still 
be very, very limited. But again, look, private schools, public schools, perhaps? Why can't we do this? I want to do this. I want to do public, not part of our laws. Requires one of the following. Disallowed state religion in church and state or disallow serfdom. Ah! All right, how do we abolish serfdom? This is, this is very important for us, laws, serfdom. Serfdom abolished. We can actually do that now, and that's huge. Let's see what happens. Again, the Shogunate. Um, actually, I didn't even look. Crap. Um, this law is not supported by any interest groups, production methods. Uh, I didn't see. Okay, the Samurai and the Shogunate both oppose this law. They're not for it. But they aren't radical. Oh, this will radicalize the samurai. We can deal with some radicals in our government, can't we? To abolish serfdom? I think we can. This is a tremendous opportunity for our government. We've pushed in uh, a ruling party that we want to have rule and implement changes. It's going to push a lot of people out of the loyalist camp into the radical camp. But we actually just did a huge change a second ago. So we'll see what happens when a political group becomes very motivated against the government. Also, we can look at the, the makeup here. The samurai 8% versus all those other groups in terms of clout in the capital region, at least. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted. I do want to say to the viewers right now, one immediate impact... Uh, of changing governments is a there's a radicalism kind of movement here support and radicalism to stop this abolishment from going through that's absolutely in the cards right now we did have some positives like the peasants coming out and the buddhists and the petite bourgeoisie all liking us but we very very importantly lost all of our support from the shogunate meaning that we miss we're missing out on this investment pool so we went from very negative, like you can see the balance here, is like was negative and it doubled in negativity. We're now eating gold reserves like crazy. In fact, we've eaten all of our gold reserves. So now our construction is slower than it was before because we literally can't afford uh, to do the thing. So we went ahead and changed up our budgets. We increased taxation, which lowers our legitimacy a little further. We'll see how long we can get away with it. And we're also going on consumption taxes on some luxuries here. Tea, uh, tobacco, liquor. So that'll bring in some taxes from us. They'll hurt the people consuming those goods, primarily the aristocrats. Um, and then again, we've lowered our government and military wages. People don't like that, but uh, and it's going to lead to more poor people. But we're doing our best. We're trying to keep the budget afloat and keep ourselves moving forward in our market where we have a huge discrepancy in that steel and tooling industry um so absolutely tooling and a lot of other pieces and steel mining iron mines are all being worked on right now and eventually we're going to get uh coal mines produced as well because we'd like to eventually get those street lights just first we have to keep pushing on these iron mines so there's two major locations in our country where we are making that happen so let me just do 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 deprioritize certain things i'm pretty sure i can what is that shift click alt click to move to the bottom yeah we'll just bring the tooling down a little bit the shipyard being improved is nice but the tools and the iron are really what we need right now to to drive us into overdrive and there we go the lathe is ready to go again that's a production method for our glassworks textiles and furniture manufacturers that are going to really help the economy by driving down the prices of a lot of these uh staple goods the problem is let's go here the problem is see that right here the these these are the culprits that we're looking at the problem is that that's going to require even more tools and tools are limited by iron iron needs more whatever 
it's a crazy crazy thing that we're, society that we're living in right now it's working on canneries which is interesting i'm not sure what we're going to research next i think it's time to start at least putting some points to colonialization Col anyway but there you go so we're the economy is on track we're getting closer and closer every day serfdom is abolished let's freaking go huge changes it does oh it said it was only going to radicalize the samurai maybe i read that wrong it radicalized the shogunate okay uh it definitely made uh people quite quite upset let's uh feudal practices of serfdom have been abolished let's go see what the samurai they're very very angry with us and they have a bandit leader okay yeah <laughs> and arrogant so at least it's uh lowering the legitimacy if they were in charge but uh thankfully that's not us. now let's look at the shogunate they are neutral they've got a lot of clout we really need to suppress this group at least push them away i don't know what to do yet but they're meticulous and ambitious and a diplomat that's fine but we need to get them the hell out of here so they want serfdom. What do you know? Surprise. I don't. Let us look at our laws. The reason we did that, look, we can actually, child labor is allowed. I'd love to restrict that, but we need uh, some labor movements for that first. So if we go back into laws, what we were actually looking for is schooling. And we have a chance to push for public schools. Buddhist monks will oppose it. Private schools, it's basically the same. Uh, so let's go ahead and push for this. Again, there's really slow times to, to enact this stuff because we have to fight legitimacy and whatnot. But people are quite happy. The clout is all over the place. Peasants are being empowered. Power is being pulled away as much as I can from the shogunate and the others heir apparent tokugawa man holy jeez arrogant expensive tastes so that's wasting our tax money and yeah holy jeez so a lot of this is okay i guess but traditionalist opposing a lot of the things that we are pushing for we want a reformer in in politics and we got to push for that through how whatever what however we can do it that's how we got to do it also let's look at our market here finally the price of iron like we're starting to get are we not getting more sell orders we're building more uh, facilities let's look here at the iron mine they are hiring people on so as soon as this gets upgraded i would expect uh, more people to move into those roles so here it's currently hiring the production is going up and now we're at 384 so we're just building a whole ton of iron mine development as soon as it's done we're lifting people out of subsistence farming to pay them a wage um, where they can now produce important throughput material for us, which is iron, which is then helping our tools trade. And now that we have lathes, we actually also have been helping the production of clothing over time. So the clothing production has been going up and up and up. And so has the, uh, the furniture. So just our economy, let's have a look. This is the trend line, baby. This is the trend line. This is what we've done since 1936. Holy. Right, that's one, two, three, four, five. We were about five blocks up and now we're seven blocks up. To me, that's a 40% increase in GDP. I'm pretty sure it was 14 million. It's, it's wild. I wish I could see this number um, in a more isolated way. For, Perhaps there is a way to do it, but I'm unsure of what that is. States, assets, investment pools, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. Well, I'm not really sure. Either way, we are taxing, we are investing, and we are growing our economy aggressively. The fact that we've changed the rights of the peasants away from serfdom I, I actually can't wait to see what kinds of impacts that has. I know that 
if you just go to your subsistence farming, right, we're doing home workshops with free peasants instead. So the output is a little bit better, it would seem. Unscaled modifiers, scaled modifiers of subsistence output, but the serfdom produces more grain specifically. And the thing about that is that we actually didn't need more grain. In our economy, grain was actually super, um, super overproduced. See, we have a huge surplus of it. It's worth less than it ever has been by removing the workforce that's focused on just harvesting grain. You can see that the price of grain has gone up because we don't have so much of a surplus anymore. But now those people are being more economically profitable in my iron mines. So let's go. And then people have been lifted out of serfdom. They can spend more time, um, you know, producing home goods, tools, furniture, and clothing for themselves. Because less of their day is slave labor, basically, working the fields in the feudal system. So it's just better for everyone right now, other than the landowners, uh, the slave owners, as it would, the serf owners. And our economy is going to blow up from here i mean it has been blowing up as we just saw looking at these gdp values over time there's been some dips the lulls but we've gone through the pain points we now have an industrial base to start moving from so let's freaking go okay so we just had a bunch of things happen one of them was like establishing colonialism and stuff and i'm gonna pass some laws but i'm actually wrapping up for tonight i've been going way too long way longer than i should have been and i'm pretty sure this video is going to be way too long as well but that's fine it's the opening video i'm having a great time with this game and i'm learning so much it is not a simple game i'm sure that's been uh, made very apparent but i figured that uh there's extra teachers there's an event going on that i actually have a chance to interact with so um Parents who have experienced teaching children at home are offering to assist as teachers in the rural areas to facilitate new public schools. So we can uh, basically know we cannot let this distract from other work and get enactment success of only 6%. Um, or we can hugely, holy jeez, while this is being enacted, lower our agricultural and ranch throughput to double that bonus to 12%. Right now, public schools is quite low in its percent chance to succeed. I think it's been debated or something. Um, or rather, some of our groups have moved into marginalized. I'm going to take the big hit to our production because I actually really want this to succeed. It is so important to me. And I'm willing to let our market kind of uh fluctuate here in terms of agricultural and ranching goods so now there's less of a surplus there's actually a shortage of grain maybe that's a bad thing there's a shortage of a lot of things holy jeez of services uh i mean the clothing we already knew about I'm, I'm currently improving that right now but the amount of lumber that's missing even uh is not something i realized so lots of things here and then we also have to do more uh research which Honestly, probably the health system seems uh, pretty good. Charitable hospitals seems nice. Let's grow our population even more. Authority has been okay, but it's not something we need so badly. Romanticism is close to finishing. Uh, economic systems, green grass campaign, realism. I think it's the medical degrees that we want. Though again, we could be looking at some of these production pieces. It's just that most of them are going to take several like a year and a half to complete i'm not sure i'm ready to go for that especially because we have manpower what we don't have is a big industrial base so i don't need to make my machines more efficient and use less people i need more machines even crappy ones will do just i want people in the workforce because even today um we can look at our population and this is I think peasants started about 85% and we've now gotten it to 81%. So we've put a small dent. Also, our living standards used to be nine. You can see that over time that's come up uh, to 
So that's improvements. And in fact, it's at 11 right now, I'm pretty sure. The middling um, standard of living has kind of come down a little bit, probably because I'm taxing their luxury products. And then the rich have stayed very, very secure. And you can see the population increasing in all of these categories, not so much other than the uh, impoverished lower strata. We're growing the middle class and we're actually growing the uh, upper class as well. I wonder if I can see, this is aristocrats and capitalists. Is there a way of seeing in here population? I wanted to see the details of this because I know that we have capitalists in here. But either way, political strength. I love seeing the difference. This is the population. This is the political strength. This little blue aristocrat block, huge. This block here, the peasants, tiny. This yellow block, massive. So anyways, I'm really enjoying this game. I hope you are too, and I'm gonna be continuing to play it. Whether or not I record it, it's just up to the response on these kinds of videos and stuff. I hope you enjoy, I'll see you next time. Ciao for now.